Yeah. Well, you know. um, so, so I teach four preps. I have four four separate classes that I have to be ready for, and three independent studies. And I would also state, just for the record, because she won't say it, but. There is not a period in the day that Ellen is not never working with students. Yeah, right. never. So that idea, uh, you know, so even, so there's no administrative assignment. It's just lab time, and there are kids that are in the art room every period of every day, and after school. Right. So yeah, time. If I could have 48 hours and 24 hours, I could collaborate. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on that. Okay. All right. So uh, currently, um, our Eighth grade students able to accelerate in art? No. I invite them to come in after school and do their own thing, and I, some with um. And, and what what prevents that, that from happening event. now? Um, it's not part of our schedule. I guess I would say. <laughs> um, it's a full year yeah. course. Studio arts every day for a full year, and we are constrained by offering all of our um, tech, home career, art, and music, or health, depending on if eighth grader would have health, that we're constrained by 10 weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, 10 weeks. Yeah. So. And I think with having me in two periods here, travel period, that limits us. Um, I try to start a sort of open studio time to uh, play with that, teaching for artistic behavior um, piece. Um, last month and it's been really difficult because the kids schedules are jam-packed um, I ended up putting it on top of chorus or band and it just like mm. <laughs> wasn't gonna happen <laughs> so playing with that maybe after school more opportunity but it's not out of the question it's not out of the question it's something we still entertain but it's Really, it's being creative with everything in the middle school is mandated. Right. We don't have a bunch of eighth graders taking an elective course in something or something. It's you have to be here, 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 and it's how we use that time creatively. And we also throw in the foreign language piece of eighth grade too. So it's, a busy it's day. not out, but it's, it's not day. an easy end. Mm -hmm. Would it be easier if the if the eighth grade was down the hallway as opposed to across uh, campus? Yes. <laughs> no, it, it's the function of an eighth grader's day and all the courses they have to have under the current schedule. It's I just have to. I just have something to add. Um, you know, when I think of STEM, I think of. You know, I think of project-based learning, I think of um, strong assessments, I think of um, struggling and overcoming that struggle and redoing and, um, and getting it better. And I think that's, you know, when I think of art, some of the best assessments that I've seen um, are in the art department. Um, from when we did Teaching Is the Core several years ago. It was, I mean, it was all uh, feedback that was so, precise and specific and um, so if there's anything that we could do connecting art to STEM I mean just initially it would be learning around project-based learning how to do project-based learning through art um, how to do assessments that really give students the feedback that they need as well as um, learning how to persist you know through difficulties yeah I'll, I'll, I'll tag on to that what you're saying because when you go in and watch Ellen's classes and you look at her advanced studio art or even the AP class those kids aren't just sitting at you know at their table drawing pictures you know they're they're creating art but then they're also critiquing art and evaluating it and looking at you know other artists but then even within the class they're comparing and contrasting their own work and talking about you know there's nothing cooler than seeing high school students looking at each other's art going, you know, I really like how you did this, but you know, how did you think about this as your main, you know, and so they're really thinking about how to do that. And when you talk about STEM and college and career readiness and all the things that we as a building are really focusing on, when you have eight AP students that are all looking at art careers, and I don't think all of them are thinking they're gonna be art teachers. No. They're no. looking at no. Art no. careers that are in a very broad world of, of art. It is, it's pretty amazing, and that is, again, 
I would say work that all of our departments doing, but again, I have the closest observation of what Alan does, and it's amazing. Do you have any students out on internships, Alan? No. Are, are there resources in the area that would allow us to do that? Um, well, we have our new resource, um, Renee. Is no, no, not it. Are there who could commercial artists? Are there resources where a student could go we, do an internship? Um, no. We ha we do have some connections with yeah. So I've had students in the past who have worked with actually former students here at Tiber, um, worked in their ceramic shop or um, I, I wouldn't say that people are <coughs> knocking down my door trying to get apprenticeships or um, internships, but I- From which direction? From the From community? the professional oh. end, right. So I've made connections with professionals and we've taken tours of graphic design studios. Um, we have professionals come in and talk to students, but yeah, not nothing in the way of internship. So much of what happens in the AP art program is about creating your portfolio, because, and so the sheer volume of time that our art students spend in the studio creating their own work. If you have a student who's an advanced art student like that, frankly, I don't know that they would have time to do an internship because they spend so much time in the studio. They're, they're not just in there. So you saw in the presentation a 40 minute period, <laughs> But they're also in there during their free periods and after school because the the rigor that is required to get that portfolio ready for submission to the AP board to get the score and also if they're applying to art schools that portfolio is the most important piece of getting into an art school so you have to be creating art as opposed to watching other people create art or trying to work with other artists that's part that could be part of it and could be cool, but so much of the time really is the studio time. Yeah. But I, I would like to look down like cornerstone projects, you know, like actually um, doing an internship, which would be great for many of my students. Like one of my students wants to go on to be a tattoo artist, right? So she is eventually going to be getting an apprentice with a tattoo artist. So that's an art, that is an art career, right? So that's something that you have to learn from someone. Right. So, and she's not going to do it in my wait, class. Wait, wait, wait. You can tell me, you can tell me there's no that body work going on? <laughs> Nothing permanent. <laughs> yeah. Right. But yeah, so that's something that as we, as we head down this path of careers, what we want to do, yes, definitely. Good. Looking more into that. Okay. That's it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 Stay too long and get pulled in. Maybe too late. Jeannie, we grab the light. Oh, is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Although there's not much artwork involved in this presentation. I know. There, there are a ton to follow. Numbers. That was not to. Wait, that was definitely far more interesting than this <laughs> would be. I'll be here. Except for me, I'm a numbers person. So. Welcome back. We've been talking the budget for quite some time now. Uh, as many of you are aware, um, the governor sent out new state aid runs ever so timely on Saturday. And so we've been scrambling. It's been an excellent effort in the district office and the part of everyone there. And we have pulled together some new numbers for you for this evening. You can see again, we'll go over this, the expenditure budget history. And at this point, I know last week I said that looked like the final um, presentation on the proposed budget. However, here it is. Uh, proposed budget for 17-18 is now 24.8 million. And this represents, um, it's actually a decrease over our current fiscal of just $13,006 or 0.052%. You'll notice uh, between last week's presentation and this week's presentation, I did take the liberty to add 191,000, and that's all due to the new state aid projections that we received over the weekend. And I'll go into more detail on that throughout the presentation. So here are the new state aid projections. 
Uh, you can see 16, 17, the, uh, one of the largest lines to take a peek at is that basic general operating aid or foundation aid. That's where we received the biggest jump over the weekend. You can see the difference from current fiscal to next fiscal is actually a difference of 221000 That's really a lot of money here at Trumansburg. You may remember the last time I uh, came out and talked to you about the tax levy increase, which is the local revenue that we can generate. That difference between current fiscal and the new fiscal of local revenue was about 267000 So you can see right here, um, the governor has done well in terms of Trumansburg because we're picking up 221. That's significant for our district. Um, I'll try to just move us through this presentation. All of these numbers you've seen before. Um, if you just jump to the bottom, well, one of the other big, big lines that you should pay attention to that I've already mentioned is the basic building aid. Again, uh, our debt is falling off, and at the same time, our state aid will drop off at that same rate. So that represents a decrease of just over 500000 But when you total all the numbers, the additions and the uh, lessening amount of aid, you'll see we are only from year to year looking at a decrease of 182,000, even though our debt service is falling off at the rate of 500,000. So these new runs were significant for Germansburg. So I met with the admin team today, and we went back to the drawing board to say, you know, we really had looked last time and felt that we had really added back any programmatic increases that we felt would round out what we needed going into the next school year. And so we sat back down again today and said, so what else is on that list that would really help us um, that's not necessarily personnel? And the reason why we didn't look at personnel is that you know, this could be one-time money. So we tried to add one-time expenditures. I liked how John King termed it. He called it tier two <laughs> investments. And so they're really one-time investments that if we didn't get the same level of aid next fiscal, which right now it's too, too soon to determine, uh, I mean the following fiscal, that we could still move forward and reduce these lines and there would be no harm done in terms of program or in personnel. So I'll just take it, give you a second to look at that. We're, we're looking at adding 10,000 to offer year-round summer, well, we call it summer curriculum at this time, but we'd like to offer it as year-round. Uh, we've recognized that some individuals may like to do a, a professional development project or write curriculum over a winter break or over a spring break or February break when they have some downtime. So we'd like to be able to fund some of those projects. <coughs> we've also, in previous years, really cut back our conference lines in all three buildings. So we took the liberty to go back and add 5000 to each building. And this isn't necessarily saying that you know we'll do those $20 professional developments at BOCES. We're, I feel like we're already doing a good share of those, but these could be larger conferences if people wanted to um, go to something for a couple of days and really get um, an in-depth professional development that now we may be able to fund some of those where we've cut back on that in the past. Additionally, just moving forward with some of the STEM initiative, both the middle school and the high school requested uh, two 3D meals. Do I have that correct, gentlemen? 3D printers. A 3D, 3D printer for the middle school and a 3D mill. Okay. Which is? Mm -hmm. uh, you t it, so a 3D printer is what we call an additive device. It, it takes the polymer and creates something. A 3D mill takes a block of the polymer and is, reduces it. Oh. So it's got routers that basically cut it down and shape it. It's, it's a milling machine. It's a milling machine. Uh, the next line is 40,000 in asphalt work. Joe, do you want to speak to that mm -hmm. one? Yeah, so um, with all the talk about capital projects, we're, look, we're not really focusing outside the building because we have in the past. So, um, you know, this is kind of like a um, my plan moving forward is to allocate some money each year to do um, the asphalt work in pieces because if you look at long-term projections we're you know we're looking almost 10 years out before we develop a, another project that talk, where we start to talk about asphalt so I've got asphalt that needs to be replaced now and can't wait 10 years so um, this is really a small portion of what I would like to see, but um, 
you know, at least it's something and we can start over the next couple of years just start banging out some of this type of work um, and, and just get it done. So and, and what would $40,000 in asphalt buy us um, in terms of an area around the school? So are we talking the bus loop or are we talking it's the so back you, parking lot here? Or? So at the bus garage, the drive that goes by our fuel tanks up by the pole barn, that's 40000 to replace that. So it's, uh, I'm going to say it's maybe 100 to 120 linear feet by um, 20 feet wide. So it, it, it's not much, but that asphalt is, is, is literally gone. It's just cinder now. Um, so that 40000 would take care of that. And then I've got to target the bus drive um, where the buses are going to get to the bus loop and the parking lot right out here. Um, so really, we're not getting a ton, but if we chip away at it year after year, then, then we'll get there. Um, you know, because if we look at the, ca the scope of the capital project now, and it doesn't even matter which option, there's going to be some disturbance out, outside of the building, so I anticipate that there will be some some work. We'll have a site contractor here doing work regardless of what option we look at. So that site contractor will do some level of asphalt work. And if I can grab him while he's here and have him do, you know, three or four thousand square feet at a, at a clip, then that gets us, you know, that's part of the, the long term plan. So. Do we have any idea how many square feet of asphalt we have on our campus? Um, I figured it out once. I have a, a drawing of our campus that highlights the asphalt based on years of when the asphalt was put in. Um, I can easily figure it out. Okay. So what you're saying is no matter what, every few years we've got to fix some asphalt. Yeah. And I guess I think a little bit like the security plan we had right we, you sort right. of put a plan in place and then when monies came available you threw it at it yeah I'm assuming you've got an asphalt plan in place for how you want to do this the capital stuff you know where they're gonna mess it up and things like that but yeah. you have an overall plan for a replacement schedule like you would a roof I would imagine right it's a 10-year lifespan on the pavement yeah I mean they, they estimate 10 years we've got asphalt that's far beyond 10 years now um, well, that's good. A lot of districts will, they'll set aside money for basic maintenance of roadways, so sealer and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I two a year ago I should have sealed the new asphalt mm -hmm. that was done in 14. Mm -hmm. um, so we're a little behind on that because um, the sealer will help extend yeah. life. Yeah. Um, so a lot of districts don't plan for replacement, they plan for maintenance. So this 40,000 is gonna go more towards replacement because it doesn't, I could throw as much sealer on some of these roadways as I wanted to, it wouldn't do anything. So um, some of the worst roadways uh, we'll replace, but yes, yeah, so over the next, each year, we should set aside, allocate some money towards sealing pavement, repainting stripes and stuff. Um, so that, that's my plan, this is really, like my introduction to that plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item is 10,000 for LED light replacements. We began that work this year and we replaced them in the gymnasium in the high school. Yep. And I'll again let Joe speak to this one. Yeah, so the cost of LED lights has come way down. Um, so uh, LED bulb is about nine bucks right now. Um, the life expectancy is 50,000 hours. So if you compare that to uh, fluorescent bulb, which is about two bucks, I mean, we can get it a little cheaper than that, but um, you know, you don't always get what you pay for with fluorescent bulb. So the cheaper it is, the, the lifespan actually gets shorter. So on average, a fluorescent bulb is, let's just say 20,000 hours, uh, an LED bulb is, 50,000 hours. So um, we plan for bulb replacement regardless. 
Um, but this will allow me to purchase more bulbs, LED bulbs, because the return on investment is, you know, somewhere around three years for a project. I'll call this a project. So um, if you're looking at a three year um, return on investment and you're talking 50,000 hours for a bulb, so the, the real savings um, come over a long term for the taxpayer. Um, and that it's half of the energy use that a fluorescent bulb is. So it's kind of like a double whammy. Um, so this just, this allows me to buy it in bulk instead of a case here and a case there. And um, So the guy who knows as much about energy as anybody within a 50 mile radius of where we're sitting, when you talk to him about renewable energy and all these other things, he'll tell you to insulate your building and change your light bulbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the best way to manage energy needs. Don't, don't fuss about generation yet. No. Change the light bulbs, energy consumption will continue to, to drop. Yeah. Something that simple. What well, do you say, they change a thousand a day at Cornell? Yeah, that's what he said, which is amazing. A but thousand I heard, light bulbs a day they change it. Yeah, a thousand light bulbs a day. Yeah. He has crews that do it. That's yeah. all they do is change. That's all they do is change. Bombs. Because it's such an energy savings. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we purchased some LED bulbs this year, and we've got, as from what I understand, we've got the corridors in the high school done, and we're working on the elementary school corridors now. Um, so this is basically an extension of what we're currently doing. So when we buy ten thousand dollars worth, does the price come down from nine dollars a bulb to? Um, last year, when we did DCMO bid last summer, they, the price was eleven. When I purchased the light bulbs in December, it was nine, and I got a um, four dollar per bulb rebate from NYSEC. So I paid five dollars for the bulb um, versus two dollars. <laughs> That's right, did your grocery shop. Yeah. So, um, what people forget is the fluorescent bulb actually costs us to dispose of. And, um, so, the actual cost of a bulb is somewhere around 320 So, if we're paying 5 for LED, 320 for fluorescent, I mean, it's a no brainer, I, I think. Also, it's been shown that LEDs do have some effect on student learning. Yeah, yeah, the color rendering. Um, yeah, exactly. um, they also, um, there have been some complaints about migraines. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. is it working? Right I, I yeah, think it's working better. Yeah, yeah. so um, one of Jeannie's teachers yep. was complaining, and we put LED bulbs in, and I haven't heard anything since. So. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, there's there are benefits to the light. Okay. Thanks, John. Additionally, the elementary classroom uh, furniture, specifically in A-Wing, and the cabinets uh, need to be replaced. So we've identified it's approximately 6,000 per classroom, so five classrooms that we could upgrade. Um, and then in the high school, John King identified if he could change the furniture in the high school learning center, um, that that would be advantageous for student learning. So we looked at that item as well. And then finally, one of the bigger items is we currently do not have a pre-K playground, so developmentally it is not safe for our students to play in the larger playground. So this would be actually a split, 30,000 um, for the actual equipment and 10,000 for the contractual fee for the playground for the pre-K. Where would that go? It's an extension of the existing playground. Oh, right. yeah. We have a small one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we have a small one that was really built when we um, had an agency running the pre-K, so it's just a smaller version, so we can't put all the kids on it. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And, and 40,000 40, <laughs> will do everything we need to, to build for the pre-K? Yeah. Uh, based on the current plan that they that they did in the fall, we called Parkitects, who's the original yeah. landscape architect, and yeah. met with the teachers, and he came up with a design and went over the design with the teachers, and they liked it. And <coughs> So those are the additional increases. These are the investments that we identified last week. 
and I don't know if you actually want me to go through no. them. No. Okay. <laughs> We've talked about them several times. So yeah. the good news is is that we are at that point where the revenue coming in is much greater than it has been in previous years, and so we are able to reinvest in our program. Um, here's one of the biggest changes since last week. So you can see the 1617 tax levy limit, which is based on the eight-step formula. The, the maximum amount that we could go out, go out at for the current fiscal is 10.6 million. You can see all the other factors included that represented a 1.32% increase. And of course, we did levy that full amount. In 1718, next fiscal, the actual levy limit, again, based on that same formula, is 10.9 million that we could go out at. Again, growth factor, allowable growth factor, two of the components that are part of that formula. However, I'm proposing that we reduce the levy amount by $100,000, given the increase in aid that we just received. Um, it seems right to offset the burden that our taxpayers experience. And so I would propose that we go out at a tax levy increase of 1.58%. And what that means, if I can read the really small font, hold on, if I like. Oh, I think I'm good, but thank you. So what that means for us is that we are currently at $18.26 per $1,000 of assessed value. The increase going out at the 1.58% represents, uh, let me find out, represents an increase of 29 cents greater than our current fiscal. So the new tax rate would be $18.55 per $1,000 of assessed value. Um, that's assuming all factors stay, stay exactly the same as they are now. So again, it's just an estimation. So that's one of the biggest changes, is that we would uh, reduce the amount of the levy that we would go out and ask our taxpayers, because we do have increased revenue from the state, so. Mm -hmm. So these are the same budget propositions from last year, or last week, I'm sorry. Uh, the first one's standard, it's just the new budget proposal amount. Again, uh, rebuilding a capital reserve fund at five million, so we have a place to put additional fund balance. The vehicle and equipment capital reserve, again, because our current one, the time or the life of that is ended and we can only draw it down at this point so we would have to establish a new one to put any additional fund balance in in future years and then of course the bus proposition to expend up to 120,000 from the existing vehicle and equipment reserve for the acquisition of two mid-size school buses reserve balances uh actually it's cut off the bottom of that Oops. So you can see here, um, we've covered this before, one of the biggest lines to take a look at is that the capital building reserve currently has 2.5 million. Um, at the end, after the, um, closer to the end of this fiscal, early June, I'll be coming to you if there is any additional fund balance and asking that we move some funds into that capital building reserve. You can see the vehicle and equipment reserve after taking out the projected amount for this fiscal of 208,000 it does drop it to 220 taking out an additional 120 would leave future fiscal not enough to purchase any more buses so that's why we've asked for a, a creation of a new vehicle and equipment reserve the rest of that it really remains pretty unchanged at this point may 2nd budget hearing so at that time we'll go into detail if you um it'll be all the same information again this would be the opportunity i would request of the board if you have questions if there's something that you would like changed um, there is a proposition or there is a resolution on the board for the board to approve that expenditure budget in that amount however that's not to say that i couldn't change some of those lines if there's a strong feeling one way or another on a particular item Thank you, especially given the fact that you got the information what Saturday, 24 hours ago. <laughs> oh, actually, there's one other item. Um, 
This would, had been a request earlier, uh, late last week actually, and Tino was very gracious and pulled this together today, and unfortunately I just ran out of time to get it into the actual presentation. So starting back in 2013 was a time when we had actually abolished some positions, and so I asked her to put together the total number of positions that we had abolished by uh, units, and so between 2013 and 2017, we've actually abolished 18.75 positions. However, in that same time frame, we have brought back 18 and a half positions. Not necessarily the same exact positions. Additionally, the support staff abolishments were 35.5, again, same time period, 2013 to 2017. And again, same timeline, we have um, increased by 34.75 positions. This does not take into account any positions that I have recommended for the next fiscal. This is just through current. So what I will do is um, we'll get this information up on the website on the business page so that people can take a look at that. Any comments regarding budget? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Given the fact that you're able to reduce the levy and at the same time be able to provide a fair amount of what the administrative staff said that, they, that you need, that to me is a very nice balance. It works out well for everybody. You're in a good time financially. Things have really stabilized. Good. Okay. Moving on to item eight, regarding some correspondence. We have had some correspondence regarding the capital project and superintendent search. Fairly good. Two questions that you may get answered or reply to. Uh, moving on to committee reports. Uh, the first one is the policy committee. Can you take a look at these policies that were recommended for us at the first reading? There were very few changes. If they were changes, it was more a question of tightening up the verbiage. Um, and these basically deal with the board operations. So it's, they're necessary, but not exactly enthralling. So moved. <laughs> so can we adopt them then, if there are so few changes? So a motion to, a, to adopt the um, changes to the, as recommended by the policy committee. So moved. The, the, the policies listed. Okay, good. Frank, you gave a second? Okay. Uh, move to so we'll be second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed for extensions? Okay. That was quick. So these are the ones that Erie One Bosi sends us that, that just updates, clarifications, mm -hmm. things that are almost the law that is just put into policy. Right, right. Although I think it's it's a good idea that the policy committee has an opportunity yeah. to review, review. these yeah. Yeah. on a fairly regular basis, even though nothing mm -hmm. particularly changes except the board membership changes. So that also gives all the board members a chance to be able to sort of remind themselves of, you know, how we're supposed to be operating. So necessary, but tedious. Okay, moving on to administrative support. I don't know that there are any. Unless somebody wants. Okay, you're welcome to add anything you'd like or not. No Marie. Do we have Marie? No. 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 I can't see behind Frank. She's not. <laughs> no. Okay. I have a motion to accept the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed for abstention? Okay. I'm so sorry. Moving on to new business. We do have a motion that we discuss on the new business items A through since they all deal with the budget and we can expedite at this time things can the PST versus the motion on the budget. No, I don't want to move them in. Oh the F? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So through E. Through E. Through E. Oh I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. to uh, through E then. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second? Second. Okay, Kimberly should just gone through a fair amount of this. Do we have any questions or comments? Good. Well done. Last chance, do you want to add anything? No, I think we've talked about it numerous times, so unless there's a question. Well, it's just well done for everybody, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, just note that there was a change in under A. Yeah. Okay. Is that all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed for abstentions? Okay. Motion carried. 
Yeah, moving on to F. This is the, the Tompkins Center Board of Board of Cooperative Education uh, for the Tentative Ministry, no. Administrative Capital mm -hmm. and Program Budget. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, we have a chance to talk to Dr. Madison about this last time. Mm -hmm. So are there mm -hmm. any questions? Mm -hmm. Any comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Good discussion. Okay. Item G, <coughs> they, they have this, the vote piece has presented two members. Mm -hmm. so that's Seth Peacock <coughs> for a three year term and Mary Church mm -hmm. from Oven for a three year term. So, uh, are these? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Are these members currently on the board now, Douglas? Uh, Seth is, oh, uh, they're currently on their home boards. Right. Um, and Mary is currently on the Bosey's board. She took over a term this year for something we had to drop out. Yeah. So, and Seth will be new, but not. <laughs> and he's a great board member, so really fortunate. Good. So any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Any toast or abstention? Moving on to item H, I need a motion to accept the fact finder report. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> okay. And this was submitted by the New York State Labor Relations Board. Um, and it's also been provided to the teachers union. So at this point, I mean. This is a fascinating read. It is. It it's, is it's really, I tell you, you learn a lot about sort of the ins and outs and where we compare. You know, we sit around as board and we have to do our work in public in front of everybody, right? So it's hard to talk about these things otherwise. But, you know, this this is really, I think, informative that, you know, we're, we're I think, I would, I feel very comfortable that in the time we've been making decisions that we're consistent with the area around us. I don't see us as outliers in any particular way, good or bad. I, I think we've sort of strived for that. I'm really pleased to see that this is one of you know our, one of our largest expenses, as it should be, for our people business. Right? And I think I, I just want to make sure that you know we wear buttons and everything, but that we would you know this is a really we're operating trying to operate in a pretty fair playing field, and I, I I'm very pleased to see this fact finding. That's really helpful. Yeah, it's really helpful. It's very enlightening. One other thing about it too is the fact that um, unlike a lot of government publications, this one is written in very easily understood. It is. It's very clear, very It seems to me. So, okay. Any other comments? Is this posted so that the public could see this? This is not yet posted. Can but we put can it on the website and on the web, clearly designate so that it's easy to find? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Then all in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstention? Okay, now move over to the Teachers Association. We'll have to hear from them. Yes. Okay. okay. Item I is the approval of the CPSE recommendations. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions? Angie, do you want to add anything to that? Or you are? No, we're just late to get onto the agenda. No, no. Okay. okay. It says, it, Angie, yep. change to FRC. What does Okay, any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstention? Okay, the motion carries. And now moving on to open forum. Once again, we do an opportunity after going through with the board to have any questions or comments. Why do you look for more engagement? Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is it okay to talk about the capital budget proposals that were made last week? Mm -hmm. um, so I noticed that those had gone up. The, plan, the amount of money on those had gone up, mm -hmm. and the allow, extension of the terms of the loans, the bonds went, that went out a couple of years on each one, all three. So um, I was questioning um, that was not presented as a change. It was just the, the, the figures you put up there were different. I'm sorry, are you talking about, about the capital yeah. project or the our current capital, the, the, or the budget? Handout, the, no, the handouts for the three proposals for the capital budget. Capital project? Project. Yeah, okay. projects? Capital projects. It's different. We're all different than what I saw on 3.9. Um, gotcha. the, the amount of each one has gone up. 
and the actual total cost to the taxpayer over the course of the capital projects would be more. Um, it did change the figures, you know, putting out there for the taxpayer to add up for their thousand dollars of assessed value. Those figures all yeah. changed. But she's looking at it. So okay. um, I'm so just curious as to increase in the uh, mm -hmm. total budget. So I, um, I think maybe two items are being confused. So there was a, an open forum to discuss the three possibilities for a future capital project. So that is separate from what was presented this evening. No. No. Not, no. not this evening. Okay. Last week. Okay. So. I had a question from last week's meeting. Oh, from last week's meeting. And so when your question is in reference to the three possibilities as we move forward to consider a capital project? Yes. Okay. All three changed. The total dollar amount of all three changed from what I saw on March 9th. Well, how about we just start with checking that? Yeah. Because oh. it doesn't sound like anybody knows that these yeah, numbers change. Yeah. So, okay. so what, what we so can do let's is check that, make sure the numbers contact change. contact information, and then we can get back to you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it could just be that something got loaded up wrong. Well, each, each uh, proposal went up by approximately $700,000 or more. Mm -hmm. And the actual cost of taxpayer, consequently, over the course of the loans went up, and each loan term got extended by two years. Okay. Let's look. I mean, let's get an answer to that. Because that would be news to us, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be news to us? Yes. Although some, sometimes those numbers get slightly changed, <laughs> only because we get a little deeper into it and become a little more precise instead of sort of giving an estimate about it, but not to the tune of $700,000. Mm -hmm. That seems that's like a joke, big. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was just a difference in what? It depends on which yeah. right. yeah. figures you were looking for. In terms yeah. of being so able to do that, especially if we've made more inquiries or we've done a little bit more research or perhaps we've decided to present it this way so that people have a better idea of where, where the impact is, yeah, then those numbers are going to change, but ever so slightly. But as I said, not a, not, I don't yeah, can't really expect or let me know if I'm wrong on that, but I can set 100,000. It's, it's a fairly large amount. Yeah. Okay, well, we can look into that. Thank you. Yeah, the terms changed also. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay, moving on to board form. Don't all speak at once. Well, you guys had an exciting meeting last week <laughs> relative to board membership. Well, it's getting, you know, this is yeah. becoming more fun because there are people and you can interact. Yes, that's true. Instead right. of talking to the walls, you know. Um, speaking of which, what is the, can we just go over the process and deadline for uh, candidates for the school board? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, right. Well, yeah. petitions are due on the 17th of April by 5 p.m. 17th by 5 p.m. And the applications are available both yes. online and also with you? Um, there's a process online to apply for an application. It goes through a series of questions to oh, make sure people okay. are qualified. And the qualifications would be? Uh, you need to be 18, you need to have a reading right, you need to live it within the school district boundaries. Okay, do we have a map of oh. school district boundaries? Mm -hmm. uh, you can go uh, the school district. Yeah. 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 So, so, so we'll go with six until the election, yes? Yeah. We'll yes. go with six board members till the election. You guys discussed that last week? Um, not really. No, we did not say that. that. So we'll go with six until the oh, election, or does the board wish to appoint? I mean, we have the ability to appoint an interim board member until the election if we felt that it might make sense to do so. I mean, I'm sure we... Oh, what's your thoughts on that? My I don't know. I mean, we have... How many people are running for the board? I have seven petitions out. To have received. And send them down, see who we like. So, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, that's a sort of a silly right thing now. to say, but the so fact there's is. There's four <laughs> applications out, but how many have been returned to you? One. Only one. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we've got one application one. for two openings on the board. Okay, so we don't have six candidates. For two months. Mm -hmm. It needs to be printed by next Monday. By next yeah. Monday. Yeah. Two, there's only two right. board seats up. Yeah. And it's not a two seats. Yeah. Yes. Two uh, seats in oh. a just right. Point. We have one solid. Right. Have all the signatures in. <laughs> it's Diane Lynn. She's got her okay. petition in. Good. Good job, Diane. Great. <laughs> great. Well, it's great. Not, it's not out there. From past times, so, if I remember correctly, it's not unusual that there, some will come in and sort of almost put well, it that way. Yes. So, okay, so we still have time. Yeah. As far as adding or appointing somebody for the interim, well, 
pointed out, was talking about two months. Yes. We've operated before with all the yes, we have. only six of it. Yes. And I would suggest that at this point, it, we shouldn't. We should just mm -hmm. continue as we are. But I'd like agree. to hear from you all. I know. I agree. I agree. I, I, think, I, think, I think we should just let the public decide at the vote. and, and Okay. Go from there. No, I mean, I think we've made the major decisions that we're, we're going to make. We've, we've appointed an interim superintendent, we've approved the budget proposals, and we've postponed the capital project vote. So and we've think, accepted the, the fact and, we've, and we've accepted the fact finders report. So what else do we have to take off here? So I think in, in terms of um, the major decisions that they have been made, and I think secondly, um, unless we're going to look at finding an experienced previous board member to step in that the time of getting that person up to speed um, by the time that happened the yeah. two months would be up so I think that that's exactly right yeah. exactly right. right and as you pointed out we've sort of come got through a lot of the things which we need right. to vote on and what's going to come up next is right. um, probably pretty much routine all right well so then the consensus would be that we jump sorry I was, gonna, I was jumping okay jump um related to that after the election, so once we know who the successful candidates are, do we know when the um, next board training is? Yes. The in-person board training? It's, it's pretty immediate. Yeah, um, I don't know if you any information on it's it. It's usually they I, start I, sending it out. I got a day. date at the last meeting, but I, I didn't bring that material with me. From NISBA? Uh, yeah, uh, well, from either NISBA or SBA, <coughs> which is what we, yes, and we normally to uh, recommend see both why. SBA, but I really recommend both. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I think it's important to point out the fact that there is significant training that's available and is required. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's one thing. I just wish I had planned for that when you know it was sort of mm -hmm. a last minute thing mm -hmm. anyway. Season. But I wish that <laughs> yeah. when I, when after the vote, I wish that I had put in my calendar right away the training. Yeah. So I think I, I sent out a letter right afterwards yeah. to the six. The oh, good. You Neat. probably received an email from me that okay. said these are the training dates. Right. This is what you need to be available. Cool. Or okay. this is what's required. So good. Good. Nisba. Um, I, I was in touch with Nisba because they do trainings for um, our region for yep. GS2 school boards, and he shared that there will be a new board training the third week in July, like that, the end of that week. I think it's the um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I think the when you needed training I think the training was so far away and it was during a really strange time I think that's why you couldn't attend well, you were I didn't have a car yeah. Right. Yeah. so I couldn't drive yeah, and yeah. I mean I think when I went up it was at OCM BOCES up in Syracuse yeah. yes. when I went yes. years ago yeah. right yeah. so yeah you had to be able to get up there and you know that's yeah. well at this point they're also I think that the um, NISPA is, is offered online so that you can actually take it without having to drive anywhere however I think that being able to sit down with a bunch of other people who are actively learning and interacting with what's going on is far more yeah. useful than just, you know, in the wee hours of the night, 24 yeah. years e Early on, the, 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 I, I'll say as sort of doing it myself, I, the training is very important early on. Yes. yes. Uh, because the language and the rhythm and the complications <laughs> the that are involved. All of that stuff, just, just getting, getting it under your feet, the way yeah. budgets are built. And then, of course, there's the whole, hey, what kind of personalities do you have on your board? <laughs> well, Never mind just the, the machinations of make run the school district. It's this interaction that, that is critical, really, that, you know, that we don't create problems. And we talk about that a lot in the training. And then the other training that we've done over the years, getting in the car and riding with a fellow board member somewhere. To do those things, I don't think those things are spoken enough about the time involved to sort of be good at it, and it requires a lot of training early on. I, I needed it because I had no idea what was going on. I also think it's really important in the fact that people understand what the, the, the purview of the board is, because frequently people feel as though that they can solve the problem. And that's perhaps one of the reasons why they think they would like to sit on the board. And it turns out that there is no way that they don't have any authority to be able to do that. It's a fairly, not necessarily narrow, but it's very prescribed as to what the expectations of the school board are and what authorities they do have. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's not only coming from the Department of Education, but also we have contractual obligations that we're required to follow. So being able to find out the limits of 
whatever you'd like to do. I think it's very important very early. In fact, probably would be a good idea if people are running for the board, if they had ideas, that they ask current board members to say, okay, I wanted to do this, can we do it? The answer might be no. <laughs> Yeah, that's no, an interesting. Not for thought. want of requiring or wishing, but that might that's a good idea for I mean I think it's too we have a week left, but maybe next time there could be a one pager, like one quick like a quick sheet training for thinking about running for the board. Yeah. Here are the those those concrete parameters that you talked about. I don't know what happened. I put it yeah, I put maybe, a welcome on the front of the mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. A, lot of we a lot of those cool board pamphlets used to scan years ago yeah. when we first went. To, she stopped that. So and now, yeah. that was nice. Those were useful. I still have people read them. Most of them. I used yeah. to. Yes. Oh yeah. Well, it was one of the few things I could understand. She'd send the financial report. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I can start them again. If you yeah, I, I, I always like them. If you have them, it's great to have them. them. Pay attention yeah. to it. Yeah. It's just good, you know. Five tough questions you might get, or, or you know. What does it mean to be a board meeting? Why are you doing this sort of thing? Well, a lot of the, co the comments were very timely as to what was going on. So related to either something we were dealing with or something that was coming from ah, the state. Ah, the work of a good board clerk. Imagine yes. that. I just would like to put the request out there for us to do an, another board retreat as soon as we get the new the members. Yeah, that's what we've already spoken to. Uh, I think it would be great that. for us to kind of go through our expectations and the, you know just the just the basics for us again because it's one thing going through it I just recently went through it last year it's another you know when you're faced in the situation of you know how what you can say what you can do um, and what are the rules for certain things I think that's important for us to just hear again even those who've been here for years you know it by heart but I think you it's know, great it changes for every year. Us to <laughs> no, but it's Frank also pointed out that when you have new board members come, the dynamics of the team they changes. Change. It's just mm -hmm. like they were talking about the, the Supreme Court. Sure. That even one person can change the actual interactions. And it's good to be able to have an opportunity to sit down with people you may or may not know and to be able to just ask questions and find out. Mm -hmm. Get to know each other so that we can learn how to work well mm -hmm. and cooperatively with each other. Not necessarily always to agree, but be cooperative. So there's a retreat on the calendar? Or no, we, no. Need to, we need to wait until the new, we have new board members to be able to find out what the schedule is right. So we'll, we're shooting for this, for a mid to late summer. I'll stop that, but we just want to see it. I think before we start. Yeah. Great. Any other comments? Okay. I, I do have something I'd like to say, but not on that one. Okay. Um, we had a rural schools retreat uh, last weekend, or, yeah, last week. Um, and Rural Schools is currently engaged in the development of a logic model for uh, just standardized planning. Um, it, it provides <coughs> effective planning, collaboration, and monitoring when used on a routine basis. Uh, the model identifies inputs, actions, and outcomes in a formal fashion, allowing groups to really clearly identify the actions which are most likely to be effective or fail. And I, I'm getting into this for a reason. Uh, currently, John Sippel and Gretchen Reimercheck, who is new to our association, we now have a deputy director who sits full time at Cornell and does research with John Sippel. And that's going to be a terrific yeah. advantage to all of us um, in the near future, I hope. Um, she's housed at Cornell um, and is working on hiring Cornell students on how to obtain and retain top-level teachers in small rural communities. This is becoming a serious problem in a lot of our rural communities. In fact, oftentimes they don't, they don't even have the staff to teach high-level uh, math. People are really fleeing our rural communities. Often young teachers stay for three to five years and then leave for more urban, higher-paying districts. Um, and it often leaves our rural schools with a disadvantage, particularly in the field of technology. Um, teacher retention is a serious problem in many rural schools, and rural kids frequently are afforded less diversity in education, fewer educational opportunities, that may be saying the same thing, um, very limited opportunities to experience high tech, even in agriculture, which has become an incredibly high tech field. Um, digital agriculture has become a huge and very much a growing field. Much of it is currently being managed by drones, believe it or not. 
which are monitoring all sorts of factors, including proper fertilizer application, um, all sorts of outputs, and perhaps more importantly, um, excessive fertilizer runoff, which is particularly a problem in the lake areas. Anyway, we as a rural schools board continue to lobby for expanded opportunities for our rural students whose communities are tired of losing their children to the lure of better paying jobs in larger cities. On another note, Bassett Healthcare is currently running a number of in-school health care centers, which might be of interest to some of you. They are, they're fascinating, they operate really in a neat way. And they are experiencing more and more problems with violent drug and alcohol abuse, but are having considerable impact and using, um, on the crises, using individualized health treatment plans. Bassett's been really wonderful in some of our very, just very scarcely populated upstate uh, schools and they've been wonderful and they are apparently using what is known as I don't know whether anyone knows what this is or not I don't at present the Robert Johnson culture of health model you may be familiar with it Angela but certainly the first time I've heard of it but the um, I think an increasing complaint in the rural the field of rural education is the amount of drug abuse and disturbed children that we are seeing and the, the extra amount of money that many schools are pouring into schools for health care. It's, it's becoming a rural crisis. The, the rural schools, with the people they have in there now, yeah. they're the strongest advocates, I think, for any group. They are. They're, they're very strong advocates. I think they're trying to find a political voice with their yeah. executive director. We are. Right? But you know the, the stuff that gets managed at Cornell, they're policy driven, they're sort of demographic based, they've got a yeah. lot of, you know, it's data driven stuff because it's wonderful stuff. Like yeah. you said, I'm with you hundred percent. Rural areas are really struggling We're with taking these sorts of things. It's 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 it's, 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 it's harder to keep the kids here. We're on the short end of the stick and communities are getting sick and tired of losing their population. And we're pretty fortunate, you know, around this area that we can still keep some yeah. people here. But we're working hard at increasing the knowledge of farming and building up those FFA chapters and that kind of thing. And BOCES plays a huge role in that. We had 16 very highly talented um, FFA members go through a section at Cornell uh, doing things as esoteric as, as monitoring mares uteruses for something or other. I can't even remember what it was. but. Uh, it, I mean, great opportunity. I don't know how prepared anyone can be coming from, you know, a routine school environment for an experience like that. <laughs> but they seem to love it. <laughs> uh, but it, it's important not to forget our rural. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Entertain a motion? So we'll moved. Meeting. Second. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.